the cheapest icicle or meteor lights from AliExpress at about $4 shipped. Let's take a look at the circuitry. I am wondering if this is a capacitive dropper in here or something else, but there's one way to analyse that. We could plug it into a tester. Let's bring up this tester here. And we'll plug it in because it's got a better fitting plug, I think. We'll find out in due course. And we'll turn it on and see what sort of power is involved here. So I'm going to turn it on. Nothing happened. I can tell why. This this connector, this plug is not making connections to any of these. I'll put it halfway in. There we go. There's our little uh, snowing icicle meteor effect. Okay. And the power is actually wavering up quite high. About 7 watts it's going up to. Which is how unexpected. That suggests that it's not a capacitive dropper in here. There is another test we can do. Keep in mind that this isn't guaranteed to be isolated from the mains. Let's bring in a meter. It's currently set to the 20 volt range. Let's turn it on and probe into the end and see what if we're getting here. If it's a stable voltage, 5 volts maybe. Oh, it's about 6 volts we're getting. Wavering up and down though, with demand. Okay, that's interesting. Fairly stable-ish in relative terms. Right, tell you what, we'll unplug that and open things up. And I shall draw a schematic for these. It's not going to be complicated. Generally speaking, the things like this, they use the classic 8-pin chip. I'll zoom down a little bit in this. And there's a couple of resistors there. Hold on, what are they? 10 ohm, which will be the main current limiter. And 1.5k. I don't know what that is, but there's the two resistors there. Uh, and a little chip with numbers on it. I shall get the numbers off that. But after that, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 LEDs. Do the end plugs come off these easily? Or are they glued on? I think they're a friction fit. But the 12 LEDs are echoed on both sides. They're probably in parallel, each LED. And that suggests 4-pin tri-state multiplexing, which I'll show you in the schematic later on. But this is the bit we're kind of interested in. I think this is sealed shut. Let's try and open it. If it doesn't open easily, I shall go and get tools and use brute force on it. It may be sealed for safety. Lol. Oh, no. Maybe it's not then. Maybe it's not sealed at all. I reckon it's going to be a little switch from power supply in here. Which would be nice. And I suppose, really, the fact they've put it in a little box like this means they don't have the complication of a... Uh, different cases they just need to change the plug and end and it's cheaper in the long run it is a little switch mode power supply okay so we'll reverse engineer that as well it's a the small one like you'd normally find sort of for lights and stuff like that well which is what this is right tell you what then i shall reverse engineer the circuitry and we'll take a closer look one moment please Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. And this little circuit board here is currently running from a bit of street lithium. So that's quite handy. It can run in quite a wide voltage range. I shall unplug it because otherwise it will just be slightly annoying. Flashing away there. So I shall zoom in this. This is the power supply section. Something worth mentioning. The connectors in this are not polarized. So you can plug it in back to front. This does look, well, the circuitry in the icicles looks as though it's going to, or meteor tubes, looks as though it could protect against that. But we'll take a look at that afterwards. However, it's worth mentioning there is a little white stripe on one side of the wire. It's not very visible, but there is a white stripe. And as long as you marry those up from side to side, it should be okay in most instances. In most instances. So this is theoretically an isolated supply. It's got a primary winding and it's got a secondary winding. The isolation isn't great. I wouldn't really count on the separation between the windings as being, shall we say, first world compliant. Um, developed country compliant. And the tracks on the back of the circuit board are very close. There's not really much spacing between them in the back here. Between the input and the output. But it is based on a 3667HB chip. Um, do I have the full number for that chip? Uh, I, I'm just going to go and grab the full number of that right now. One moment, please. And resume. It's an LP 
3667BH. And it's very simple. It only actually uses four pins, though they have doubled up in the pins for the collector because it's got a standard NPN style transistor inside. And oddly, they've doubled up in the feedback pins. I'd guess that this is available in other packages as well. But the chip has its own little capacitor and it's also got a very interesting little resistor arrangement here, just a single resistor that goes and sears the feedback winding that isn't powering it though, which is interesting. It seems to be powering itself via possibly the primary winding. On the output, we've got the Schottky diode, a capacitor here and a 1K resistor as a sort of passive load just to make the circuit stable when it's not got a load in it. And the input on the other side of this, there is a fusible track roughly a fusible track and the AC comes into a bridge direct fire and off the board here is a 3.3 microfarad 400 volt capacitor. Okay, but there are two windings, a pri two primary, well a primary and a feedback and then there's the secondary in the output. That's the important bit to know. Here is the manufacturer's data sheet complete with its uh, watermark. Confidential. Do not share with anybody but here it is anyway so you can use our products. Very odd. Note, there is no Class Y capacitor. Some of the designs seem to show that, but it's not used in this instance. So the incoming supply goes to a bridge right far, and then there is the 3.3 microfarad 400 volt death beam capacitor, as used for powering 5G death beams. Note that they're saying ground here, and they're showing the little earth symbol. Let's get rid of that. Let's just show it as a typical base reference line. That's what we'll call it. They call it ground. In reality, it's what the circuit sees as ground, but it's not actually a reference to mains ground. We have the primary winding here, which is switched to the ground from via a transistor inside the chip. We have the little uh, capacitor here just to provide the chip its own stable supply voltage. And then we have the feedback winding from the zero volt rail feeding back via this resistor to the feedback. And it says 1.2 volt is the th feedback threshold. I guess there must be a fixed resistance, a fixed impedance inside. And by tuning this resistor value, it means that the maybe the winding ratio is less critical. But by tuning that and the winding ratio, you can select what voltage is mirrored on the output because roughly this will mirror what's happening in the secondary. The secondary winding goes via the Schottky diode, charges that capacitor up to roughly 5 or 6 volts. This is instantly a 5 watt power supply, so let's just say it could be used as a USB power supply, 5 volt, 1 amp. And likewise, you can, if you don't want to use this power supply, if you want something safer for your own setup, you can just power these from a USB power supply. It will be absolutely fine. Or lithium cells. And there's a little 1K load resistor. That is a power supply. Very straightforward, very low component count, quite surprising. Okay, let's go on to the uh, circuitry for the Meteor itself. And I was wrong. I thought this was going to use tri-state multiplex, and that's why it was using 12 LEDs. Maybe they've used 12 LEDs to emulate that, just to make it look as though they've done that. But it could also be because they've got six pins on the chip. And uh, that means that they're actually running pairs on each side. They're all in common. So you've got four LEDs. The first two on this side and the two on that side are connected directly to one of these pins. And then the next two are connected to the next pin. So basically, one, two, three, four, five, six. And when I power it up, I'll power it up again. You wouldn't really know. It, it's happening so quickly that you wouldn't really know that it's not just individual control over the 12 LEDs, but it is just six channel. And that is it. Okie dokie. There are two resistors. One is the master resistor for limiting the current, the positive supply to the LEDs, all of them. And the other one is for a little 3.3 volt supply inside this chip. It's a 1.5K resistor, and it means that over a very wide voltage range, this just has 3.3 volts across it. So it's, it's got its own shunt regulator, so to speak. And it's not really... It doesn't have to worry about powering the LEDs from this chip. All it's doing is connecting these pins to the zero volt rail. I don't know if it's a dedicated chip or not. There was no information I could find about this. Just a tax organization in India, which wasn't terribly helpful. Here is the schematic of this. There is the magic chip. It is a TMI 1834-2417MT. Does that mean 2024 17th week? MT manufacturing location, not sure. Could that be the number? I didn't 
uh, find anything. I drew a blank on that. But here is its pl- positive supply, and it's fed from the 5 volt supply via this 1.5k resistor, and it creates its own 3.3 volt supply in there with a shunt regulator inside. There's the 0 volt rail, which is the 0 volt reference for the chip, but also what the LEDs are switched down to. There is the common 10 ohm resistor, and each of these LEDs represents the four LEDs A, B, C, D, E, F, the channels, and they're just all connected with the commons, positives common up to the 10 ohm resistor, and then the negatives all being switched down to the 0 volt rail. Very simple. Not a lot to it. Uh, so, what do we take away from this? It's an interesting little power supply, maybe not trustworthy for our applications, but the actual cluster of meteor tubes are fine for your own projects. You're just going to have to supply them with a, well, you could supply them with a fairly wide range of voltages. I reckon you could go six, seven, eight volts maybe with them just getting a bit brighter, but maybe pushing that resistor and the LEDs a bit harder. But it does look as if it's designed for around about five volts. And that means that you can effectively take the the lead out of the power supply, remembering that the white stripe is the positive, and you could just splice it onto a USB lead and power a big long string of these plus extend them because they do have the extendable output so you can connect more. And you could connect quite a few to a USB supply. Um, and that is it. The current isn't mega. Actually, you know what? Uh, just give me a second. I'm just going to connect them up to a bench supply and I'll check the peak current visually of, of the display uh, as it's chasing. One moment, please. Okay, on 5 volts, I saw it peak up to about 100 milliamps, um, which is reasonable enough. So for, say, a 1 amp supply, you could have theoretically up to 10 of these. Keep in mind, they're not all going to be drawing that at the same time. There is going to be a sort of a, a surge of current. It drops down to virtually zero when it's, well, it does pretty much zero when it's not got any LEDs lit. But the peak is when all the LEDs are, well, the bulk of the LEDs are lit as it's swiping across the display. But there we go, and it will operate down to lower voltage. You can just plug it into your lithium cell directly, and it'll just run at a slightly lower intensity, but it'll still do the same thing. But there we have it. Uh, the meteor lights, the cheap meteor lights from AliExpress, I will provide a link to that, um, just in case you want them. As I say, don't use the power supply. I wouldn't recommend using the power supply unless it's just for personal use in a workshop or something like that. Uh, where nobody else is going to have access to these, and you understand that this is just a cheap power supply. But uh, it's certainly worth it uh, otherwise, just for the cluster of meteor lights that you can then use with your own choice of power supply. Pretty neat.